So the first thing you should see is a is an infographic I made a while ago. And the reason why I made this um this this graphic is because as I sat in on a lot of people adult education classes, they really didn't focus or put importance on the first five. Okay? okay. The first five are the ones that you cannot use your calculator for. Okay. So the reason that's why I have here the first five, start strong. If you get the first five right, it's going to build your confidence, it's going to build your self esteem. If you get the first five incorrect, you go, it's, then you're going to start questioning yourself. So I would say always, you know, make sure you're ready for those first five. So what are the, some of the concepts on the first five? Okay, undefined. Okay, there are two reasons why uh, uh, a rational expression is undefined. If the denominator cannot be zero and the a square root cannot be negative. So you can have the square root of a negative number. Mm -hmm. It's almost always on your exam, undefined. Greatest common factor. Okay, well, greatest common factor, the number that goes evenly into something else. That's what a factor is. So, for example, the factors of nine are one, three, and nine. Least common multiple. Okay, well, you have two sets of numbers and you're trying to find the least common multiple. Well, multiple is just multiplication. So, say, for example, I wanted to find the least common multiple between three and seven. The multiples of three are three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. The multiples of seven are seven, 14, 21. What numbers in both those lists? 21. 21. <laughs> Ordering fractions, decimal percents. You have to know your fraction decimal percent equivalents. You have to know how to change those to a decimal, add zeros if necessary. You should know your square, square roots, cube, and cube roots. Um, your absolute value. So there's two things. Now, even though sometimes they don't say absolute value, they give you a distance between two numbers on a number line, which is basically absolute value. And then the last thing is converting mixed numbers into improper fractions and multiplying mm -hmm. and dividing decimals. And I'll send this little infographic to you so you make sure you focus. Because I don't have a quiz actually on the first five. Actually, one of my students here tonight um, said, Mr. Tinsley, do you have something for the first five? And I don't. So I'll be That's working on that idea. very soon. Well, I'll have just uh, 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 assessments just for the first five. So I will um, I'm, I'll probably start on that. Uh, have a bunch of one on one sessions this week. So I'll probably start on that on Wednesday. OK, so that first five are very important. So that's, you know, undefined. So I said, first of all, start strong. The first five, the first five problems on the exam, the TI-30XS calculator cannot be used. The first five typically come from the following concepts. Undefined, greatest common factor, least common multiple, order and fraction, decimal percents, square and square roots, cube and cube roots, absolute value, which is the distance away from zero. And, and they use that with finding the distance between two points. And then converting mixed numbers and improper fractions and multiplying and dividing Divide decimals. Decimal. I heard somebody pop in. But my screen disappeared. I don't know what's going on with my Zoom. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure we are all on the same page with the first five. So first of all, let me start off by saying who has any questions on something they've been working on this week? Because I'm going to surprise y'all if you don't. <laughs> I got something for you. You better be ready. So has anybody been working on a problem or something that they had difficulty with? So I know um, Ms. Davis said uh, a volume problem, a cone problem, right? Let me see if I can yes. find it. Let me see if I can find it. Let me open up Schoology. If you don't know what Schoology is, it's the, uh, I got a free GED math course. You can take assessments, quizzes, practice GED exams, all things to help you pass your exam. So give me a couple of seconds while I open up. That one, and if you have any other problems that you have, which you can do if you want to, you can if you can take a picture and send it to my email, and then I can put yeah. it right on the screen. We can all go over it together. We are all in this together. All of us are having problems passing this test. All of us, um, whatever issues you might have, someone else might have too. All right, so let me find this problem. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let 
I don't want to get a question. That's going to take me too long. Let's see if I can find it. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I had a question. Hold on. The, the time difference always. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Destiny. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm on the we on the East Coast. We on the East Coast. <laughs> that three hours difference is a lot of time. But one thing you can do is, uh, you know, I try to put each video up and uh, put all the chapters in so you can make sure. Now, um, Ms. Davis, are you talking about the pyramid volume or the cone? Uh, the cone. The cone, because I don't see a cone on this test that you just took. Let me just um, let me just make sure. I'm going to put it on the screen. Because this is this the last one you just took. And the only one I see is this one here. Not that one? No, not that pyramid? No, not that one. The first one. No, not that one. Okay, let me see. All right, let me try. Let me try. Oh, I, I see what it is. Similar action test. Let me see. And again, each of you. Um, so, if usually I had a limit of five, five times you can take each test. Um, I, uh, if you want to take an exam more than five, let me know, and I can increase it for you. But usually I have a limit of five. Uh, let's see if I can find the cone, the cone, the cone, the cone, the cone, the cone. Where are you? I'm gonna have to make one up. <laughs> Mr. Tinder, it looks something like this. Okay, let me draw a cone. I'll draw a cone. And what information did they give you? What information did they give you? You hear me? What information are they giving you? Hello? All right. So what what I'll do is, Ms. Davis, do you have the information? All right, I'll make one up. All right, let me try to make one up real quick. All right, so let's make, let's say the... This is uh for three quarters. Let's say the, the volume is let's see. Let's say the volume is 30. 30 cubic feet. Oh, okay. I want to know the height. Does anybody know how? So I, I identified this already as a cone. A lot of times they might not tell you it's a cone, but um, you got to identify it as a cone. I gave you certain information. How can we solve this problem for the height? Does anybody know how to do this problem? How would we solve this problem for the height? Could anybody be, know? Could it be base time height? Nope. Remember, you can use your formula sheet. I don't want you guessing. I do not want you guessing. What is what is what is the where do you start to do this problem? See, a lot of people swear. are going through the practice problems and they're remembering how to do a problem. You want to systematically break a problem then. So first of all, you want you want to identify your givens. What is given first? Remember, you should hear me in your head. They gave what me is given. 
They gave you a diameter of four over three fourths. So four and three fourths. So if my diameter is four and three fourths, what else do we can we extract from that information once we know what the diameter is? Uh, well, we got radius. The radius. How do you find the radius? You just have to half the diam diameter. Right. So it's half yep. the diameter. So how will we yeah. figure that out? If we know the diameter is four and three quarters, how can we find out what the radius is? So you know, you just told me dividing by two, but when we're yeah. in class, eight divided by two is four. Ten divided by two is five. They always give you whole numbers. But what do you do when they give you the diameter is four and three quarters? What do we do to find a radius? Make it the proper fraction. You square it. Well, we, we could. Divide by two. Divide by two. So remember, when you are taking half of something, all yeah. you're doing is dividing by two. Man, yeah. we can use our calculator. Okay. Am I correct? Yep. Yep. So what is four <laughs> and three quarters as a decimal? It's two point three seven five. No, no, not the ready. Not yet. You did you oh, did get oh, that right. Oh, but what's oh, the oh. diameter as a decimal? Oh, oh, sorry. It's four point um uh four point seven five. 4.75. So this is where I told you. Remember I told you about that first mm -hmm. five? And knowing your fraction, decimal percent equivalence. Mm -hmm. Well, the equivalence to three quarters is 0. 0.75. So yeah. four three quarters is 4.75. Now, instead of having to do all, put all that mixed numbers into your calculator, right. you can just put 4.75 4. 4. divided by two. Yes, that's better. And you get, somebody said it was what? Hey, man. What I say? 2.375. 2.375. Again, this is what they've been doing lately. Always start with what you know. They gave us the volume. They gave us the diameter. You should know how to find the radius. You have to divide. No matter what your diameter is, I don't care if it's fractions, decimal, percents, whatever it is. In order to find a radius, you divide it by two. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Come back. Now, what is the formula to find of uh, the volume of a cone? Okay, so. What is the formula to find the volume of a cone? I don't have my, my answer. Does anybody have their formula sheet handy? Now, remember, you should hear Mr. Tinsley. Every time you work on math, you should have scrap paper, calculator, formula sheet. And that's the only thing I'll have is my form sheet. Volume equal one third pi okay. r squared height. Correct. Now, hold on. That's not what she said. She said one third pi r squared h. What did I put? Are they the same was... thing? Are these the same? formula yes yes multiplying by one third five. yeah multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three right yeah, so now again, three. we already know our formula now i could tell you right now if you had multiple choice for example if i had uh uh i don't know okay Oh. If I had if I had multiple choice and I had let's see uh four five six and seven oops <laughs> four five six and seven okay so what I would recommend you do is before I have to solve this algebra is that they have given you the answers. So what I would do, what I would do is I would take each one of these and substitute it in, substitute it in for the height. Mm -hmm. Until I get what? 30. 30, okay. Hold on, Mr. Tizzy, what, what do you mean by that? Let me show you. So first of all, I'm gonna erase this left side just for a second, or um, just for a, uh, well, I couldn't. Uh, yeah, let me move it over. Let me just clear it out right now. So uh, let me write it up here real quick. So we said so. Somebody write down 
The volume is 30. Well, I can remember 2.3. I can remember. I'm going to clear everything out. And we had A, B, C, D. Uh, what I had? Four, five, six, seven. We know the formula is pi r squared h divided by three. We know the volume was 30 cubic feet. And we also knew the uh, diameter was four and three fourths. So we knew the radius was 2.375. So what I would recommend, instead of having to do this algebraically, you just plug everything in. So, oops, let me grab my calculator. I'm going to grab my calculator because I'm the calculator person on the internet. It's like, no, I'm kidding. Listen, if you if, listen, if you don't understand this, this, this is your best friend. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. If you ain't been using this calculator, I don't know what to tell you. Watch this. So. Pi r squared h divided by three. So I'm gonna hit nd. Mm -hmm. What is pi? Does anybody know what pi is? Three point one four. Three point one four. Um, remember, if you put something in parentheses, you're using what operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. What is the radius? The radius is two point three seven five. So two point three seven five. I need to square that. Mm -hmm. Close my parentheses. My h. It's coming from where? From where's my, where's my H? Where's my height coming from? Do I know the height? No. So no. what number am I going to put as the height? The what? Right. What am I going to put for H? X. Oh, you... No, not X. No. The, uh, Are so you, you talking get... about one of these numbers? Yes. One of the multiple choice Four. numbers. Four. Let's try four. four. We're going to start with four because that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Then divide it by three. We're going to hit enter. What number? When we press enter, what number am I looking for? We need the volume to be what to know if four is the right 30. answer. 30. 30. 30. I'm going to press enter. Did I get 30? No. 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 So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up into this, to this equation. I'm going to okay. press enter and I'm going to change that four to what? To the next number, five. five. Which is what? Five. Five. And I'm going to press what? Enter. Yes. What did I get? Got the number. The value. I'm done. No algebra. No algebra. <laughs> no algebra. Not a little bit of algebra. None. <laughs> Let me maximize this so you can see it. And then I'm going to show you what they want you to do. And I'm not doing it. Now I'm going to show you what they want you to do. I'm trying to get you the easiest way so you can pass this exam. If they give you multiple choices, if you have the answers and you know the formula and you know how to use your formula sheet and you know how to use your calculator, mm -hmm. plug each item in until you get the correct answer. Yep. Yep. Okay. But I'm going to show you how they, they want you to do it. Okay. So let me undo a thousand times real quick. This is very important because um, understanding the computation, understanding how to do it is one thing, but you should also have other strategies in place to make sure you pass. Right? So I'm, a, I'm just going to erase the formula. I'm going to erase this uh, whole cone. We know what the cone is right now, but I'm going to erase all this left side so I can do the calculation. Okay? So I already have the volume. I need to, this is what they want you to do. They need you to solve for H. So the question is, how do I get H by itself? Like, huh? Listen to this, I've never seen anything like this. How do I get the H by itself? How do I move, have just the H all by itself? What do I need to get rid of to get the H by itself? None of that. Anybody know? Well, do we need to get rid of pi? We also need to get rid of what? I can let me see. Um, three. We need to get rid of the three. What else? So if we want, okay. so all you got to do is cover the H up. Everything on that yeah. right side, you got to get rid of. You got to get rid of pi. You got to get rid of the R square. You got to yeah. get rid of the three. Yeah. Everybody understand that? Yeah. So what's the opposite of dividing by three? Multiplying. 
multiplying by three. So first we're going to multiply both sides by three. What happens to the two threes on the right? They cancel, cancel. out. They cancel out. So I got 3D equal pi R squared H. Next, I need to get rid of pi and R squared. They're being multiplied by H. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. 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 So I need to divide by pi R squared. Whatever I do on one side, do I do side. on the other. So the pi's cancel, the R squares cancel. I'm left with H equal 3V divided by pi R squared. That's a whole lot of work. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole lot of work. I just showed you a much easier way to use the multiple choice. But this is what they want you to do algebraically. This is what, the, if they ask you for the height, that means you need to modify that equation and change that equation to solve for H. Now, now all we're going to do is plug into the calculator. Let me er erase this right side since we have everything. So we know, no, I'm not going to erase it yet. I got to move it first. So we're going to take all this information that we have here. We're going to make it a little bit smaller and we're going to move it over here. And then I'm going to erase this formula because we no longer need it. And I'm going to put my calculator back on the screen. I need to clear everything out. And I'm going to use that formula that we had. So ND, three times V. What was what what our volume? 30. 30. 30. Divided by pi R squared. What's pi? 3.14. 3.14. 3 and what's our radius? 2.375. And we need to square it, correct? Yes, yeah, square. So look what we did. 3V divided by pi R squared. Do we still get the same answer? Yeah. <laughs> we got the same answer. Five. But it yeah. took us three to four minutes. Now, if it, if it took us in class three to four minutes, how long would it take you to do this problem? Mm. So, so this is why you practice using the ebook with all the different problems. This is why you practice with Schoology, all the different problems. So when you see the multiple choice, oh, let me fill that multiple choice into that formula. Let me see what my best answer is. And you get in the habit of doing it. Because what you remember, you got about, on average, if you got 40 questions, you got three minutes a question on average. That's it. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind. So that's a, this is how we do uh, that uh, volume of a cone problem. Did that answer your question? Ms. Davis. Okay, maybe she stepped away. But there we go. So that's a volume problem. Any other problems that people have difficulty with? Uh, yeah. Um, writing the um, writing a, the equation and not so much as intercept form, but the other way, the standard form. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, give me an example. I can make one up, but it doesn't matter. Let me make one up. I got. Okay, well, this one is going through two points, so. Okay, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter. Okay, okay, negative five, negative five, uh, comma, negative eight, and the slope M is equals five. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, listen, I'm glad you asked that question because everyone here should know you're going to see a problem where they give you a point in the slope. It's on every single GED exam for the last since 2014. That's what I need to know. That's nine years. Mm. You're going to see it. They're going to give you a point and they're going to give you the slope. How you get the equation aligned. So, so and if you see my videos, I see it a nice, easy way. Identify, again, we're starting the same way. Identify what you know. Since they gave you the point, what two mm -hmm. things do they give you when they give you the point? They gave me the X and the Y. The X and the Y. Perfect. When they and give you they, the slope, they also give you what? M. So I wrote M, M so right. I kind of gave it away. But the slope is M. Yeah. So Y equal MX plus, plus B. B. That's where we're going to mm -hmm. start. What is our Y? Our eight. Y is 8. Negative 8. Negative 8 equal. Mm -hmm. we go, all we're doing is substituting what we know into that equation. What's our M? 5. 5. What's our X? Negative five. It's negative five. Negative five plus B. So we didn't okay. do anything that hard. 
All we had to identify is that we know the slope intercept form, y equal mx plus b. If they give us a point, we got to identify that they're giving an x and a y. And if they give us the slope, we got to know that's our m. Does everybody okay. understand that? OK, so now we're going to break down the yes. minus 8 equal. What is 5 times minus 5? It's negative 25. Negative 25 plus b. Plus b. Now, okay. this is a one-step algebraic equation. How can we get b all by itself? So you had to plus the 25 on both sides? You had to add 25, 25. on both sides. Okay. What's 25 minus 8? Oh, let me see. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's 17. 17, bring down our equal to 25's cancel. We bring down our B. So we know the slope, right? Or do we know the slope? Do we know the slope? Yeah, uh, okay. This yeah. is, is uh, What's minute. the slope? Nice. You ah. got, you got, yeah. It's, it's given y, to us. It ain't nothing to y, figure out. We know the yeah. slope. What's the y intercept? The y intercept is B. I mean, Which 17. I'm sorry. 17. So if we know the slope is 5, we know the y intercept is 17. What's our equation? Okay, it's y equals 5x plus, uh, plus 17. 17. So you might be saying right now, hold on, Mr. Oh, Tisney. That's not standard form. That's no. not what they have in the multiple choice. I'm going to show you an easy way to make any slope intercept form standard form. Now, you, it might seem like magic. It <laughs> might seem quick, but I'm going to show you. It's in one second. It's one move. Watch this. I'm going to show you. Ooh, I lie. Ooh. Subtract 5x from both sides. Oh, wow. Minus 5x plus y equals 17. You are now, your equation is a standard form. That's it. That's it. Because I've that's been working it. on this stuff all day. <laughs> that's, that's why you come to the Monday sessions. I'm going to show you yeah. the easy way to do it. This is why I tell everybody, if you're stuck on a problem too long, don't waste hours and hours. Shoot me a text. Shoot me an email. I'm going to give you an easy way to do any problem you can possibly get on the GED. I'm going to show you a much easier way to do it. That's all you have to do to change slope intercept form to standard form. And subtract uh, or do the opposite of that X value on both sides. That's it. That's that is algebra. it. Okay. All right. Now, let me see another one. I, come on. Bring them on. Bring them on. I'm ready. Now, this one. Okay, you got negative seven, comma two, and the slope um, m is negative seven over five. Oh my goodness! They, now, what I can tell you is this: for college, you need to know how to do this. Oh, for the GED, okay. for the slope, they're going to give you whole numbers or common fractions. You won't see okay. a negative seven fifths. Well, okay, good. But don't worry. I got you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're going to do it the same exact way. I'm going to change my okay. colors again. Y equal MX plus B. My Y is what? Uh, uh, negative oh. 7 over... Uh, no, 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 no. Oh. X and Y, 2. 2 equal mm -hmm. my slope is what? Negative 7 over 5. My X is what? Uh, uh what is it? Negative 7. seven. Negative seven. Now I'm gonna change that to an improper fraction so I won't make any mistakes. So I know okay. to multiply across. Okay. So okay. I get two equal negative seven times negative seven is what? Uh positive 49. Positive 49 over okay. five. Over five. Plus B. B. Now this is where it gets confusing. Are you confused? I don't know yeah. if you're confused. But yeah. guess what? I'm gonna show you how to do it. Remember, this is where people make mistakes. You don't need to make a mistake because you can use your calculator. Mm -hmm. If I want to get B by itself, what do I need to get rid of? Uh, oh. Is no, it no, 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 don't get scared. Listen okay. to what I'm asking you. <laughs> if I need to get B by itself, what do I need to get rid of? Well, okay. I'm confused. I don't know. Far. Listen to what I'm asking. I'm only asking one simple question. If I if B is on the right side of my equation. Well, you got to get rid of the two. No, hold, hold, no, hold, not the, hold. Oh, Listen. not the two. 
B Multiple is on the right time. side of my equation. Yep. Okay. I want to get B by itself. What do I need to get rid of? That fraction. What is the, the fraction? Five, Tell me what it 49 is. 49 over 5. 49 over 5. The mistake that people make is they want to okay. multiply by five and do all this. Thing. No, no, it's just like any other thing. It's, it's one term. So if I want to get rid of the 495, this is a positive 495. I need to take minus 49 over five. Okay, okay. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. Oh, hold okay. on, Mr. Tizzy, what the heck do I do now? <laughs> this is why I said you must know your fraction. This is why you must yeah. know how to use your calculator. Because mm -hmm. first we'd have to remember to add or subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. But guess what? I don't want to do all that work right now. Right, right, right. I have my calculator. In the first, uh -huh. one of the first lessons Mr. Tisley has in his ebook is how to do all the operations with fractions. So two plus 49 over five. Don't waste your time trying to do this by hand. Mm -hmm. So now we have 59 over five. Oops, I meant to put minus. See, nobody even said them, saw, saw that mistake. Two minus 49. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and change it in the form. Yeah, let's, yeah. Nobody even saw it. I made a mistake. I'm minus trying to do it. 49 okay. Over five. Boom. So we got minus 39 over 5. So minus 39 over 5 is equal to B. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Now okay. I, okay. Now, okay. remember, the calculator is your friend. Right. The, only, the, the only problems you cannot use your calculator is the first five. That's why I'm telling you, go in the ebook, do the lessons, because when you get to this test, if you know how to use this calculator like the back of your hand, this test is going to be easy. Now, watch this. Since we know the y-intercept, since we know what the slope is, what's my equation going to be? Oh, wait. Okay. Okay, so we're doing y equals negative 7 over 5. My, I guess that's minus. Uh, minus seven over five. What? Uh, is that a plus? Is it no? Y it's equal a m. X. What? X. X. Negative five. I, I know. <laughs> minus. That's a minus three thirty nine over five, right? That's it. Oh goodness. Okay. So, so that's your equation. Yeah. Y equal minus seven five seven fifths x minus thirty nine over five. But you might be saying right now, hold mm. on, because they're not going to ask you to put in a standard equation, but standard form. But I'm going to show you how to do it. Oh, I that's okay. Okay, they're not okay. If you but look I at that common denominator, know. both of these are saying mm -hmm. divide by five minus seven x divided by five minus thirty nine divided by divide five. By What's five. the yep. opposite yep. of dividing by five? Multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole side by five. Oh, Whatever wow. I do on one side, I what? You got to do to the other. I do on the other. So now I have 5y five. equal this five and this five cancel and this five and this five cancel. I got minus 7x minus 39. Again, how do I get to standard form? Add my 7x to 7x. This. Mm -hmm. Stop playing. 7x plus 5y equal minus 39. 39. Now, let's check to make sure we're right. Okay. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something right now. Let's so check it to make sure we're right. Watch this. If I'm in standard form, you show, if, if we're in standard, let me change back to uh, black. Remember, I told you, what's the easy way if you're in standard form to find a slope? Slope equal minus A over, over B. B. Equal minus 7 B. over B. 5. Is my mm -hmm. slope 7 fifths? Minus yep. seven fifths. Yep, that's Bam. what it is. I told you my y-intercept is c over b, which is mm -hmm. negative thirty-nine over five. Over five. Is my y-intercept negative thirty-nine over five? Yes, it is. Stop playing. Listen, that's what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you go through this ebook, not only am I going to give you a conceptual understanding, but you're going to learn how to use this calculator. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Watch this. Okay. Now. And this is fine and dandy, right? Again, I told you they're going to give you whole numbers. So let's do a whole number problem where they give us 
you know, I think okay. the last one was was that, right? Right. But guess what? Mr. Tinsley's love using the calculator. I do he too. loves it. He, he's wrote this ebook. He took his time out of his schedule to create this 137 page magnificent thing that only costs $19.99. It's going to be the best $19.99 you ever invested because I've had people take the test 17 times, 15 times, 12 times, and get my, go through my book for 30 days, take the test, and they pass. Watch this. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Okay. Watch this. I'll show you something. Where are you? Where are you? Bam. M equal minus seven over one. So my change in Y over my change in X. So that means my Y is going to change by seven. My X is going to change by plus one. Four plus one is five. Eight minus seven is one. I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm going to use my two points. Let me clear everything out first. Go to my data. My two X's are four and five. Okay. My two Y's are eight and one. Second data, two variable calculator. I'm looking for A and B. If we look at the A, this, this is my is slope. This is my y-intercept. So my equation of line is y equal minus 7x plus 36. Yep. All my answers are in standard form, so I need to add mm -hmm. 7x to both sides. Mm -hmm. I get 7x plus y equal 36. How long did that take me? Not shorter this time. <laughs> Lot shorter. Yeah, shorter this time. Yeah, I was, I don't know why I was, uh, see, see how, see how we put somebody under pressure? See, it doesn't matter who it is. Me, I know how to do it and I still was under pressure, right? And I still did it wrong. But listen, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If you understand, if you go through this book and you practice these practice assessments and practice GED exams I have on school, and you score consistently over 60, you will pass the exam. But also understand if you purchase that ebook before you take your test, you schedule your one on one session with me. So, therefore, you can identify the problems that you have on the exam. We go, are going to go over it one to one. So, when you go take your test, easy peasy. Now, now it's 20 minutes left. So, but this is what I want to do. I got a surprise for you because everybody getting tested today. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody getting mm. tested today. Stop playing. Are you kidding me, Mr. Tisley? Everybody getting tested today. Let me see. Hold on. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. This is it. So on my website, I have a bunch of different um, quizzes that you can find, right? So what we're going to do is, this is what I found over the weekend. Over the weekend, I had a lot of people having problems with the first five. So that's how we started this. But today, before we leave, we are going to practice with the first five. We're going to have a quiz. So what I need you to do is, let's go with classic. What I need you to do is classic. We're not going to make it a test. We're just going to make it classic. What I need you to do is, even though we're on Zoom right now, what I need you to do is open up another tab. Don't worry about seeing me. I want you to open up a new tab. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to this site right here, and you're going to enter this code in. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how much you know about the first five. So I want you to open up a new tab, and I want you to go to joinmyquiz.com, and then you're going to enter this code. 936722. Join myquiz.com. You're going to enter the code 93672. We're going to join my quiz. Join my quiz.com. Now, you didn't know you was having going to be doing this today. You didn't now, know. 
You now, did not okay. know. No. <laughs> okay, it says enter code. 936-722. So I see Rose, I see Penny. Now let me see how many people I have in here because I think I had a, let's see, three, six, nine, twelve. You see my name? 15. I got, I got push start. Um, right, right. When you put the code in, you should see your name pop up. Your name didn't pop no, up. That means you, no. yeah, so Destiny, you are in the building. Penny no, and Rosa also. I'm not in it. I put my name in there. Did I push start? I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to join in. With, I'm going to join in with you. Hold on. Let me. Do, I'm going to tell you exactly what you did. So when you go to join joinmyquiz.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to enter that code. I did. Nine three six seven two. So yeah, come up with quizzes. It's come up with it says quizzes is, should be spinning, and then it gives you the, it gives you time to put in your code. There's nothing else you got to put. Just put the code in nine three six seven two two. When you're I hit did join. that, right? Okay. You're gonna hit Let join. Me Let me go back. I'm doing that right. Okay. And then once you hit join, you will see it. It, it will have an area for you to put your name. Okay, it says enter code. I redid that and it got join a game. That's what it got when it says it up here, unless I'm on the wrong one. To say, it should say join. I don't know if it say join a game or not. I'm not sure. Maybe I have to create an account. Uh, no, you don't have to create. You do not have to create an account. You do not okay, have to well, create the account. Okay. You push quiz, join. I might be on so, again, so all, all of these can be taken as quizzes. Or they can be taken as flashcards. So I got some for formulas, quadratic equations, linear equations. So I have about eight to nine different things. They're on my website. And you go under um, uh, um, flashcards and you'll see them. So I'm going to give like one more minute. Then we're going to go ahead and start. So hopefully, if, hopefully everybody can join in with you. I don't see it. I mean, it says join my quiz. Okay. Then right at the top, it says enter code. You enter your code in and then you go and hit join. I'm trying, Mr. Tinsley. <laughs> I'm at joinmyquiz.com. That's what I push. Right. Okay. Right. Now it says join quiz activity into code, right? 936-722. Now three six seven two two. Now click join. So now it says to enter your name. Enter your name. Okay. Now it says start. It says start. There you go. Stop oh. playing. All right. Now we are gonna go ahead and start because I don't, I don't want to run out of time. So I'm gonna right, start. Oh, oh it's a, hold on. Now there's 18 people. So we got, but we got two, four, six, eight. We got 10. So eight, eight people a little bit apprehensive than joining, but don't worry because you can take this on your own. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm hit start. And we're going to go ahead and see how well uh -oh. you will do with the first five. Oh, no. What is 3.2 times 1.5? Is it 480? 0.48, 4.8, or 48? Why they got convert to a mixed number? That's what I'm looking at. Uh, I might be on the wrong thing. What are we doing? And it's, uh, let's see what we know. Let's see what we know. This is wrong. Hey, Rose, I just took the lead from you. And it's like a game, so you can use your power ups. What are we doing? I, I didn't see the game. I don't either. I'm on something else. I'm else. On, uh... Everybody's not the same, I don't think. Everybody's oh, different. Oh. So this is what you should see is the leaderboard. So right now I'm in first, Rose is in second, 
and P is in third. And then Penny did not, let's see, Penny's in, I guess they got some ties there. You should have about a minute for each question. I don't see any questions. And it's crazy. I know how to do this stuff too. I want to be able to hear you, so I put I turned the music down a little bit. Oh, no. oh, who jumped up? Rachel then jumped. Oh, look, somebody just took the lead from me. Stop playing. Oh my goodness. Rose, you then took the lead from Mr. T. Mm, mm, mm. Guess what? I need to come back. You still got the lead. Oh my goodness. I ain't got no points because I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take your time. Take your time. Uh oh, I'm back in the lead, Rose. I'm back. I, got, I had to come back a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> And, and these are indicative of the first five that you'll see on your exam. So if you're having problems with these, you should make sure, hold on, let me make sure I know how to do these. Let me go to uh, those flash codes. Who just jumped up like that? <laughs> who just jumped to third place like that? I Sharon. Don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Holy crap. Oh my God. And it's like a game, so you have different power ups, you can get double points. Rachel. Oh, so Rose, Penny, and Rachel all got three in a row. They are hot on my tail. Rachel moved up to thirds. Closing in on Rose. Oh, no. That's all right. Ouch. Uh, listen, everything during this session is a learning session. Which is Whatever you don't know, yes. that's under fire. Make sure you know when you take your exam. Okay. Least the greatest. Okay, now, least the greatest. Oh, exponent rules. Look at everything. You listen. You take this to this quiz oh, and these flashcards a couple of times. You should be prepared for your first five. Oh, okay. Mm. 
No. Hmm. Oh, Sharon and Penny flip flopping. It's third and fourth. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, Rachel, Rachel said, okay, don't forget about me. Here I come. I love it. I love it. Oh, Sharon just said, oh, no, not today. <laughs> I'm a comedian in my other life. Look at that. Oh, Sharon just jumped up the sack. Oh, oh, and then Penny jumped up. This. Oh, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. What a race. Neck and neck. Closing in on me like that. I got to hurry up and get one right. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, I know this is. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, what you do? What you do? What you do? Mm, oh, mm. Um, I know it is. I know what it mm. is. Don't tell me. I think, yes, that's it. I had to remember. Yes. <laughs> now remember your power ups. You can double your points. Oh, look at Sharon. She got seven straight closing yeah. in. She has retaken second place, but Penny said not <laughs> so fast, Sharon. You might have pulled up in second, but here I come. No, that's right. <laughs> Okay, so re attempt a question. Okay. Jump up to fourth. She, she Why did I pick this one? Three people. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. That's wrong. I probably should stop the recording. Hold on. No need to see all this. Okay, so put the following in order from greatest to least. So the first okay. thing you should be doing is fraction decimal percent equivalence. You want to change everything yep. to a decimal. What is one yep. half as a decimal? It's 0.5. It's 5. 0.5. How about yeah. 0.33 is already a decimal? 0.25 yeah. is already a decimal. How about 1% yep. as a decimal? At zero, at zero point zero, zero one. Zero point point zero one. Okay, and what's eighty five percent as a decimal? Zero point eight. Uh, yeah. Point eight five. Point eighty five. Now, right, you notice right. they they all have two decimal places except for one half. So I'm gonna add a zero. Ah, now, from greatest to least. What's first? Zero point one. One. No. What's greatest to least? Not oh, what's the greatest. Eight point eight point eight five. Point eight five. What's next? 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. What's next? 33. What's next? 25. Zero. I did that on purpose because that's why most people miss this question mm -hmm. on the test because they run through it and they don't pay attention to least the greatest or greatest to least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was yeah. two. Let me show right. you three. Absolute yeah. value. Okay. Right. So absolute value of A, which is minus four, minus three. So we do mm -hmm. first the absolute value of negative seven. Oh, absolute value. Oh my god. In seven. the bracket seven. Oh yeah. It's I seven. Put, seven. I put and negative, I put negative seven. seven. I put negative I did me too. Seven. I did too. I put if negative. You, seven. So this is what you want to remember. The absolute value. Two lines is listen to what I'm saying. The absolute value of any number cannot be negative. And negative. So right away, if they ask you for the absolute value, you should have got rid of two right away. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two, one, two, three, four, 13, and 14. And then, uh, okay, this is another one people miss. Okay. So one of the things you can do, remember I said, you can use the calculator. 
Write it okay. in, but if you can't, look at what it's saying. It's saying, okay, the square root of some number mm -hmm. squared equals five. So put them each in, the square root, a square root of five squared. Well, we know the square root and square cancel each other out. So this is the square root of five equal five. That's not correct. Let's plug the next one in. The square root of five squared equal five. The square root of 25 equal five. What's the square root of 25? Five. Five. There you go. Five equal five. That's your answer. Five five. Uh, 13 and 14. I'm only going to go over the, these two. 13 and 14. And I'll send you the link okay. for this quiz. 13 yes. and 14. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> that right was fun. Now, most people got this wrong. Look what it says. Magellan had decided to make party baskets for the fundraiser. Balloons are sold in bags of 20. Party horns are sold in bags of 10. And there are eight candy bars in a package. How many of each should he buy so there are an equal number of balloons, horns, and candy bars in each basket? Right. We got 20, 40, 40. We got 10, 10, 20, 30, 40. 40. Five. And then you got eight. Eight, 16, 16. 24, 32, 40. Oh. So it's 40. I did get 40. I did, I did get it right. 40. So that's a that's an answer of least common multiple. 14. Mm -hmm. Again, this is another example. Every 12th caller, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. Every 15th caller, 15. 30, 45, 60. Oh. When will the when which caller will be the first to win both? Caller number 60. 60. Okay. Learn something new every multiple. day. So so again, so, so so what I'm going to do is you'll have this. Did I start the recording over? Was I recording? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I was recording. Perfect. So you have this recording, but I'm going to send you the link if you want to take this over again. To me, yeah. this is my opinion. Now, oh, let me say this. Uh, the person who had not passed now has passed. I am back now at 100%. Hold on, what do you All mean by that, right. Mr. Tizzy? That means everybody who I've helped and was serious about studying for this math exam since 2015 has mm. passed the math exam. I'm 100%. Praise God. 100%. Yes, praise God. You got that right. 100%. <laughs> I'm back to 100%. She called me. I mean, she sent me an email. I believe it was last Thursday or Friday. Amen. Amen. So praise I'm God. so happy I'm back at 100. So again, <laughs> I have a lot of resources. Let me show you where it's at real quick. And then we'll get to it, hopefully. And this is on my website. I'm also going to see the link with the YouTube video tonight. Um, okay. But I just wanted to show you. Um, I do have a lot of inter interesting things on my website. I got articles. I have flashcards. I have a bunch of different things. Um, so let me pause. I don't need to. I guess I don't need to put this on the on the video.